What's up, Senders? Let's talk about my Santa Cruz Bronson. Don't worry, this is not a long-term review. There are plenty of great ones out there, and I generally agree with most of the testers who have come to the conclusion that Santa Cruz absolutely knocked it out of the park with the latest version of the Bronson. It is, in fact, a phenomenal all-arounder bike. In this video, I want to hone in on how I built up my Bronson. Specifically, I want to look at how I built it bigger than stock. And while I've been kicking myself for not having brought you this video sooner, I've been riding the Bronson now for most of this riding season. I'm actually glad that I waited because Santa Cruz actually just released the version six Nomad. And this is relevant because I've actually got my Bronson built to have more travel than the new Nomad. I've got my Bronson sitting at 180 travel in the rear. So maybe you're someone who has a bit of upgrade envy looking at the new Nomad and rightfully so, it looks really sick. Or perhaps you're looking to see where you want to come in in the Santa Cruz lineup. Again, I wanna show you how I built up my Bronson, which is a stock 150 travel bike, how much versatility you can get out of this one bike by adding a few key components and how you can end up with a bike that is completely capable of handling bike park days. So for starters, and perhaps one of the most obvious things on my Bronson compared to a stock Bronson, is that I'm rocking a 38 stanchion fork, the RockShox Zeb. Now I had a Zeb on my Process X that this bike actually replaced, and I really, really like the Zeb. I didn't personally notice the extra weight, but I definitely noticed the increased capability when comparing it to the outgoing Lyric or a comparable Fox 36. And so I wanted to spec this bike with a Zeb. And I absolutely could not be happier with the decision. And I have actually toggled back and forth between a Lyric Ultimate that we actually had laying around in the shop and this Zeb Ultimate. And I can say that for me, I personally feel like the, the benefit that you get for a marginal additional weight, for me, it is a super worthwhile compromise. And so I've been running it with a 170 mil air spring. Now it's worth noting that that would be comparable to a, a 180 mil travel Lyric in that axle to crown length. And so I probably with the setup wouldn't want to go above a 170, but again, super noticeable increase in confidence with chunky and rough sections. We want to look at the Cascade Components LT Link. Now this is a replacement aftermarket lower link. It is a game changer when talking about adding versatility to these lower link bikes. Now in bike models gone by, such as the version two high tower, the version one mega tower, these links in my humble opinion were almost necessary to add increased progression into the rear suspension. It allowed you to have good off the top suppleness, but much, much better ramp up and bottom out resistance. On the stock Bronson, Santa Cruz really did a great job in increasing the progress of the rear suspension and so I didn't necessarily find myself wanting that extra progression but when you look at the cascade link it still has a flip chip similar to what the stock link has it has the ST setting or short travel and the LT setting if you run the cascade link in the ST setting with the stock shock it bumps your travel up from 150 to 160. If then you run it in the LT setting, it bumps you up to 170 millimeters of rear travel. But if you upsize your rear shock up to the 65 mil stroke, it actually takes your rear travel up to a whopping 180 millimeters. And so you can just see the range of possibilities that you can have from that one single upgrade. And then that brings me to the rear shock. As you can see, I'm running a RockShox Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate. This particular one comes in a 65 mil stroke. The stock air shock that comes on the Bronson is actually a 60 mil stroke. Again, with running the Cascade Link and the 65 mil stroke shock, that bumps my rear wheel travel up to 180 millimeters. It is insane how well this bike still pedals with that setup. I was going back and forth of running the air shock, but in the last couple of months, to be honest, I've just been running this coil shock because I really don't notice that big of a hit to the pedaling performance of the Bronson, but it is all the difference in the world on small bump sensitivity. And because of that cascade link, because of the kinematics change where the ramp up and the progressivity is so much better with that link, you still have really good bottom out resistance. So another upgrade that looks subtle, but adds a massive amount to the capability 
of this setup is actually the Cascade Components North Fork brake calipers. Now these are actually aftermarket calipers that are intended to replace SRAM code brake calipers. You still run them with the stock code levers. These are an expensive upgrade over $500 for the pair of calipers. But I can tell you that the difference that these have made in the stopping capability of this bike are just astronomical. I'm actually a code fan out of the gate. I think that codes are some of the better brakes that you can get for hardcore trail riding. And these North Fork brake calipers just take really good brakes and make them absolutely amazing. One of the things that you'll notice is that you can actually run the reach of your brakes inboard. These stop so well. I found myself actually being able to run my reach in. That lends itself to actually getting less forearm pump because your, your hands and your fingers aren't overextended working so hard to get good buy into your brakes. And while I'll admit for most people, it may be a bit of a stretch, just 500 plus dollars in upgrading your brakes. If you're looking for the pinnacle in braking performance, definitely put those on your radar. And pairing up with those North Fork calipers are the new SRAM HS2 rotors. This is a personal bias, but I actually think they look so much better than the normal centerline rotors. They are noticeably thicker and they do seem to add just a subtle amount of increase in your braking performance. Do they make the massive change that those North Fork calipers make in your braking? Not so sure about that, but they do seem to resist brake fade on longer downhill sections a little bit better. And I do feel like they're a great complement to the big build setup. Now, if you'll notice from the stock X01 setup, I'm running the GX Axis upgrade kit. I can't really say that it adds to the bigness of this bike. You could just as well be running a mechanical setup, but I have come to really love the Eagle Axis setup on my last couple of bikes. And while it doesn't necessarily add to the big build, I will say that it definitely does not take away from it. These things are super, super tough. It's been completely trouble free all season long. If you're looking for something that shifts well and shifts well in all conditions, whether it's muddy, grimy, no matter what, these things shift when you tell them to shift. And so uh, for me, I'm digging GX Axis. You also may notice here, this is actually not the stock X01 Eagle cassette. This is actually an E13 Helix R cassette. It's actually instead of the 10, 52 that you get in the newer school Eagle cassettes. It's actually a 952. This was a bit of a vanity move. I actually just did it because it had a very complimenting bronze sort of color. But in doing so, I've actually learned that these are really bomb proof cassettes. It is worn super well over the riding season and absolutely no complaints. And I would not have any hesitation in recommending the E13 Helix R as an alternative to the SRAM Eagle cassette. Now one really neat upgrade on this bike that is a bit of a newer piece or newer product is the Anomaly Constructs Switch Grade. It's a subtle piece that actually takes the place of the clamps on your dropper seat post. It's available for most of the common dropper seat post brands. I'm running it here on my One Up Components 180. And it is a piece that actually allows you to adjust the tilt of your saddle. It's actually three position adjust. It allows you to have a sort of level position for normal trail riding, a tilted back position, which allows you to get the saddle lower for maximal drop for your downhill riding. It actually allows for a slight forward tilt for climbing. If you think about it, when you're climbing on a hill, your bike tilts back and so does your saddle. You're still trying to maintain an upright trunk and torso with a tilted back saddle. This allows you to tilt your saddle forward. It allows for a significantly improved biomechanical position for your hips and your pelvis and your torso. And I can say for longer climbs or steeper climbs, this thing really plays out well. Definitely, definitely put that product on your radar. If you're someone who goes out and does big, long climbs, for big long descents, or if you're someone that's having lower back pain. It's a really, really cool product. It's worth noting, uh, this bike actually came stock with a 150 mil dropper. I've upped that to a 180 mil dropper. This is a size medium. This is about as low in the frame as you can get that. I have a 31 inch inseam, roughly. I'm 5'9", not quite 5'10". I'm really on the cusp of a medium and a large. I can really ride either. I wanted to sort of size down to a size medium just to see how that played out. And I really, to get a good seated pedaling height, I was able to go up to a 180 
If you're on the shorter end of a size medium, I would recommend sticking with a 150 mil post. If you're like me and you're on the higher side of the size medium, you might give the 180 a try. I just appreciate the simplicity of a cable actuated post and the one-ups have treated me well, especially when you consider they have some of the lowest stack height and the lowest insertion depth. And that again, really allowed me to go up a size with this 180 dropper. Then you'll notice I've been running the Bergtech bling matching pedals and stem. Not much to say in a stem other than it's really pretty. The pedals, however, I will say these Bergtech MK5 pedals, they're actually really great gripping pedals. If you're a sort of flats for life rider, as am I, definitely put these Bergtex on your radar. They, they grip really well, color match with the stem, not much to not like there. And that brings me to something that is completely unrelated to the big build, but is a huge departure from the stock setup, and that is the custom graphic. These were actually custom done by a local guy named Caleb, and he does an absolutely phenomenal job doing custom graphics. This also actually has a clear paint protectant pretty much all over the bike. And so if you're a regional person and you have interest in that, he does an absolutely phenomenal job. For me, I think he knocked it out of the park. I'm actually really, really happy with the aesthetic and how this bike came out and came together. You may also notice that I actually have a custom spring color. That is actually a RockShox spring that has been custom powder coated by a local powder coater called Single Shot Powder Coating. Shout out to those guys. So a quick blurb on how this bike actually plays out on the trail with the big build. Unfortunately, I've really not been able to spend a ton of time in the actual bike parks. I have gotten to take it to beach. It did absolutely phenomenal. Took very, very good care of me. I did not feel underbiked at all. After having spent several months on this, I would have no qualms taking this straight to snowshoe, taking it down the Black Diamond trails, right now with basically no modification from how you see it right now. And so really the majority of my time has been spent riding in Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, and just general trail riding situations. And to my pleasant surprise, this bike is actually very rideable in those situations. Certainly it's overkill for a lot of the riding that I do, but there's a lot to be said for having a little bit extra bike so that you can send this feature or charge harder into this rough section because you're slightly over bike. Does it pedal as well as a comparable tall boy or even maybe a 5010? Absolutely not. Is it as far off as you would think? Also, absolutely not. And so if you have a Bronson and you're happy with the stock setup, that is awesome. It is a great bike in the stock configuration, but if you're looking to get more out of it, you may consider some of these upgrades. There really are just a lot of possibilities with the Santa Cruz Bronson. I think makes it one of the most versatile bikes in the Santa Cruz lineup. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, let me know if you yourself have done some of these upgrades and how they've played out for you. If you've not subscribed to the channel, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate your support. As always, thanks for watching. <music>